This is an introductory video to mammographically guided needle localization which will cover the general principles of why and how the procedure is performed. There are five main learning objectives of this video which include explaining the indications for mammographically guided needle localization, determining the appropriate needle length and localization approach, understanding the localization technique, labeling post-localization images appropriately, and determining the adequacy of specimen radiography. Mammographically guided needle localization is performed the same day prior to breast surgery to guide surgeons to the correct tissue to excise in patients with biopsied breast cancer, high-risk pathology, discordant biopsy results, masses or calcifications which are not amenable to needle biopsy, or patients electing for or who are only candidates for surgical biopsy. There are four steps to mammographically guided needle localization and we will go through them in turn. First is pre-procedure planning, second the localization procedure itself, third what information needs to be communicated with the breast surgeon, and fourth determining adequacy of specimen radiography. Pre-procedure planning should take place one to two days prior to the patient's scheduled surgery. The patient's most recent images, reports, and pathology should be reviewed. This is to determine what is being localized, whether it's a clip, with or without a mass or residual calcifications, or an isolated mass or calcifications. If you are localizing a biopsy clip, you must determine if the clip is appropriately positioned. If the clip has migrated, this can change your localization approach. If a residual mass or calcifications are seen mammographically that are in a different location than the clip, these can be localized instead to ensure the area of concern is excised. You also must determine if the pre-surgical workup is complete. For example, if a patient has a cancer diagnosis, you should know whether or not an MRI was performed to evaluate extent of disease, and if so, if any additional biopsies were recommended and what the pathology revealed. If biopsies demonstrated additional areas which need to be excised, this can change the type of surgery or localization needed. If additional biopsies were performed, make sure the post-biopsy clip films were provided. If not, the technologist may perform CC and 90-degree lateral views the day of surgery to plan the approach that day. Now that we have determined what is being localized, it is time to determine the localization approach. In this case, we are localizing a bar clip within the slightly upper inner right breast. We next want to measure the distance between the target to the closest skin surface on each view. On the lateral view, the target is closest to the superior skin surface. In this case, the distance is 4 centimeters. On the CC view, the target is closest to the medial skin surface, and the distance in this case is 6 centimeters. The best approach is the shortest approach, thus requiring the shortest localization needle. In this case, localization from above is the most practical. Let us practice this concept with another example. Here we have a 90 degree lateral and CC view of the right breast, which demonstrates an oval titanium marker within the slightly upper outer right breast. If we measure the distance to the skin surface that is closest to on each view, on the lateral view, it is closest to the superior skin surface, and on the CC view, it is closest to the lateral skin surface, you can clearly see that the latter of the two provides the shortest distance. Thus, we would use a lateral approach in this case. Let me visually explain patient positioning in regards to approach. If you're using a lateral approach, the patient will be placed in the 90 degree lateral position with the receptor plate along the medial aspect of the breast and the open grid located laterally along the breast. This will allow the needle to have access to the breast. If you are using a medial approach, the receptor plate will be along the lateral aspect of the breast with the open grid located medially to allow access of the needle. If you're using a superior inferior approach, the breast will be placed in the CC position. If you're using a superior approach, the receptor plate will be along the inferior aspect of the breast with the open grid located superiorly to allow access of the needle through the open grid. Similarly, if you have an inferior approach, the receptor plate will be along the superior aspect of the breast 
with the open grid along the inferior aspect to allow needle access. This concept is better understood with visualization of the localization equipment. Here is an image of the localization equipment at one of our imaging centers. In this instance, the breast would be placed in the CC position with the open grid on the side of needle entry and the receptor plate on the undersurface of the breast. The technologist will aim to position the target within the center of the grid. In this image, the breast is in the CC position with the grid open to the superior surface. Marks are placed in the corner of the open grid to monitor for movement during the exam. This image also clearly depicts the alphanumeric grid that is seen along the open grid surface that is used for target localization. The grid numbers and letters are radiopaque and serve as a reference when determining the needle entry point, a concept which will be discussed shortly. Now that we understand how to determine the localization approach and position the patient, we can choose which needle to use. The most critical factor is surgeon preference, as some surgeons prefer one needle over the other. Once you know what needle you are using, you need to determine the length needed to reach the target, which is equal to or greater than the skin to target distance. There are a number of different types of needles, but the major differences are whether or not they are repositionable, their lengths, and how the wires are marked radiographically. There are two main types of needles, repositionable and non-repositionable. The repositionable needles remain within the breast and can be moved once the wire is deployed. Examples include Homer and Hawkins too. This is in contrast to non-repositionable needles, which are removed via needle wire exchange. Once the wire is deployed into the breast, it can only be removed by surgery. Next, we will review a few needles used for localization. Here is an image of a repositionable Homer needle wire apparatus. It comes in a variety of lengths from 3 to 12 and a half centimeters. The clear hub is attached to the needle and it is what is held during needle positioning. The blue portion is attached to the wire. The blue portion is partially pulled back prior to needle placement and then advanced and locked into place once the needle is appropriately positioned. There are black markings along the needle shaft at 1 cm interval starting at the 2 cm mark from the needle tip. This aids both in initial needle advancement and subsequent retraction when needed. Here is an image of a Copen's needle wire apparatus which is non-repositionable and also comes in a variety of lengths. Here the needle and wire are separated prior to the start of the procedure. The needle is placed into the press. Once appropriately positioned, the wire is tunneled through the needle and advanced to the first mark at the distal tip of the wire, which lets you know that the tip of the wire is at the tip of the needle, and then it advanced to a second black mark, which is located more distally, signaling that the wire has been deployed and is secure within the tissue. After this point, the wire is held in place while the needle is retracted out of the breast. There are also centimeter markings along the needle shaft starting one centimeters from the needle tip. There is a two centimeter reinforced segment that the surgeon is able to feel. The reinforced segment marks the location of the target when appropriate needle localization has been performed. The Hawkins needle wire is another example of a non-repositionable wire. Again, the needle comes in many lengths from three to twelve and a half centimeters. It is similar to the Copens with regards to needle placement and needle wire exchange. The difference here is that there is a radiopaque marker that is located 2.5 centimeters to the proximal tip which guides the surgeon to the area of interest. The following is a video of a Homer needle wire apparatus. Before we start, you can see that the blue portion which is attached to the wire is already pulled back and outside of the clear plastic hub. This is so that no portion of the wire is seen at the needle tip. The wire, however, remains within the needle as you hold the clear plastic hub while you advance the needle into the breast. Once the needle is in good position, you will advance the blue portion into the clear hub. Here the blue portion is being advanced into the clear hub. You see the J-hook coming out of the distal portion of the needle. We're going to pull back again and we'll see the blue portion coming out and again being locked into okay. place you can see that there's a small blue notch that fits into a small notch within the hub of the needle wire apparatus which lets you know that the wire is locked in place. 
The following demonstrates the Hawkins needle wire apparatus, which is similar to the Copens and Giatus needles. In cases of non-repositionable wires, the wire is completely removed from the needle prior to placing the needle into the breast. Once the needle is appropriately positioned with the tip at least one centimeter past the target, you will place the wire into the needle. The wire will be slowly advanced until the first black mark reaches the hub. This lets you know that the tip of the wire is at the tip of the needle. You will then advance to the second black mark, which lets you know that the wire has been deployed to the breast. Now, as you firmly hold on to the wire, you will slowly retract the needle out of the breast without advancing the wire until the needle is fully out of the breast. Now that you understand how to determine the approach and needle length, it is time to set up the tray accordingly. You will need a pair of sterile gloves, numbing medication, a marker to mark the skin during the time out, the appropriate needle wire apparatus, and cleaning solution. In this case, we are using betadine. We will now move on to the procedure itself. In this case, a superior approach is being used with the right breast in the CC position. There is a bar clip locating along the posterior aspect of the open grid. The alphanumeric grid is visualized and it's used to determine the needle entry site. The needle needs to be placed at least one centimeter from the target and at our institution the surgeons prefer the needle to be posterior to the target. It is important that the needle be placed directly in line with the target. In this case, when a line is drawn posterior to the clip, it occurs at the intersection of 0.5 and E.5. The tech will then adjust the crosshairs so that their shadow intersects at the correct location, which is seen in the second image. Ideally, the target should be within the center of the grid to facilitate needle wire positioning. In cases when the needle wire is posteriorly located, care must be taken to ensure that the needle is not pulled out when removing the patient from compression. This image demonstrates ideal positioning for localization with the target within the center of the grid. If you look at the alphanumeric grid, appropriate positioning would be approximately at 1.5 and D. Regarding technique, there are a few methods that will facilitate needle localization. First, when holding the hub of the needle, your fingers should grip each side so that the square hub is seen centrally with your hand off to the side. This positioning is key in order to see the shadow of the hub during the procedure, which is used to guide needle advancement. Next, place the tip of the needle at the intersection of the crosshairs. The needle is placed at an angle with the tip of the skin overlying the intersection of the crosshairs. Here you can see that your hand is off to the side. This is to avoid the shadow of your hand from obscuring the crosshair shadows. Next, bring the needle perpendicular to the skin surface so that the center of the needle, seen here, is in the center of the square hub shadow. The needle should remain in the center of the square hub shadow at all times to ensure that you remain on target. You want to advance the needle distance equal to one centimeter past the distance of the target as measured on the pre-localization images if the breast compression is less than that distance, advance the hub to the skin surface. The next video will demonstrate this technique. This video will demonstrate proper localization technique. First, you want to clean the skin surface. Next, you will give numbing medication by creating a superficial dermal wheel and then administering the numbing medication more deeply perpendicular to the skin surface. Next, get, obtain your needle wire apparatus. Again, hold your fingers at the side of the hub and place the needle tip at the intersection of the crosshairs. And then you want to bring your needle perpendicular to the skin surface and advance with the needle in the center of the hub shadow. Always advance along the plane of entry. Parallel to the ground if your approach is from lateral and perpendicular to the floor or ceiling if the approach is from above or below. Once the needle is in place, the technologist will take another picture. On this image, you should make sure that the needle wire is in line with the target, which is appropriate in this case. If it is okay, we can release the patient and take an orthogonal view. If it is not aligned, the needle should be removed and the step should be repeated. 
The image in the orthogonal plane should demonstrate the needle wire apparatus at least one centimeter beyond the target, which is appropriate in this case. If the needle is appropriately positioned, the wire can be locked into the place, which is seen already in this instance. If, however, the needle is distal to the target, say here, you'd want to measure how far the needle tip is from the target and then retract so that the needle would only be one centimeter distal to the target. If, however, your needle does not reach the target or if you pull the needle back too far where it is proximal to the target, you will have to remove the needle from the breast and re-perform the needle localization. Do not advance the needle in the orthogonal view as the location of the target in relation to the needle is not verified. Once accurate needle positioning is confirmed, you want to label your images for the breast surgeon. In this case, you will label the superior breast, the inferior breast, the nipple. Also, you want to note the size of the needle used, a 5 centimeter homer, as well as what is localized, the clip. This can be done more neatly by labeling the images in packs or using a wax pencil, as demonstrated in the next image. This is an example of appropriately labeling an image for a breast surgeon. Again, you want to mark the superior, inferior aspects of the breast, where the nipple is located, circling the target, and also documenting which breast was localized, the length of the needle, and what was localized. In this case, clip and calcifications. If you're using a non-repositionable wire, once appropriate needle positioning has been confirmed on the orthogonal view, a needle wire exchange will be performed. The wire will be advanced into the needle while the needle is steadily held in place. How far you advance the wire depends on the markings of the wire. In this case, we want to advance to the first black portion of the marking. Then we know it's securely in place. You want to hold the wire firmly while pulling the needle out of the breast. Once out of the breast, remove the needle entirely from around the wire. You can see that if you pull on the wire, it does not get dislodged from the breast tissue. Once in good positioning, you can lock it in place. The technologist will take another image to show that it, the target is accurately positioned in relation to the wire. Again, we want to appropriately label the images post-procedure to orient the surgeon. Here we have the lateral skin surface, the medial skin surface, and nipple all labeled for the surgeon. This is a geatus wire, and there are three thick portions of the wire. And a note has been made to let the surgeon know that the biopsy, cavity, and clip is anterior to the distal thick portion of the wire. There are times when patients need multiple areas localized or even bracket localization performed. During bracket localization, one needle is placed posterior to the posterior target and anterior to the anterior target, basically guiding the surgeon to remove the targeted tissue between the two needle wires. In both circumstances, it is key to localize the most posterior target first, even if both fit in the same grid window. For examples, if you have two sites that need to be localized, say here and here within the breast. You can easily place the needle wire posterior to this target. You can then move the grid anteriorly while still maintaining an open grid to place the second anterior wire. The posterior wire will then be posterior to the posterior aspect of the open grid, which is seen here. If, however, you had two targets, say here and here within the breast, if you place the anterior needle first, you would be unable to move the grid posteriorly this way as the anterior needle would then be covered up by the flat portion of the grid. This concept is illustrated in the next slide. In this case, a stereotactic biopsy yielding DCIS is marked by a biopsy marking clip. Residual calcifications were seen extending posteriorly which corresponded to non-mass enhancement on MRI and bracket localization of the clip anteriorly and residual calcifications posteriorly is being performed. In this instance, you want to localize the posterior lesion first, in this case, the calcifications. Here, 
the posterior needle was first placed posterior to the most posterior aspect of the calcifications. An image was obtained confirming accurate location of the needle in line with the residual calcifications. As you can tell, the bar clip is still outside of the open grid. Since the needle positioning has been confirmed, the patient will be released from compression and then re-image with the bar clip within the center of the open grid. We will now determine the coordinates to place the anterior needle anterior to the bar clip. This will be approximately at 2.5 and E.5. Once the needle is placed, the patient will be re-imaged, confirming accurate positioning of the anterior needle. Once accurate, then an orthogonal image will be obtained. The orthogonal imaging confirms correct positioning of the anterior needle anterior to the biopsy marking clip and the posterior needle posterior to the calcifications. We'll circle the entire area of concern for the breast surgeon and then label the image. Again, lateral, medial, nipple, and you want to give the needle sizes 7.5 centimeter homer and 5.0 centimeter homer with the tissue of interest between the middle one-third of both needle wire apparatus. Now that the localization is complete, the patient will go to the OR. The surgeon will remove the needle wire or wire and send the specimen for radiography to confirm excision of the target. At our institution, we use an alphanumeric grid, which you can see here, during specimen radiography and provide grid coordinates to pathology for target location. Here that we can see that the bar clip is located approximately between 7 and 8 and F and G. Ideally, you want the target to be in the center of the specimen surrounded by normal tissue. If the target is close to a particular margin, you can guide the surgeon as to which margin may need additional tissue excised. Surgeons usually mark the margins by sutures or colors or radiopaque tags. Your specimen radiograph should also confirm that the entire wire has been removed at time of surgery. And this also should be noted in your dictation. Again, communication is key. With the surgeon, there should always be a discussion of needle wire positioning, if it is good, and if a wide margin is needed in any particular direction. Regarding the specimen radiograph, you must confirm that the target is excised, the wire is within the specimen, and that the margins are adequate. You have now completed this introductory video to mammographically guided needle localization.